We have the co-author of my new book that is available for sale right now at Amazon.com. You can get it. It comes out second week of January. Make sure you get it now because of supply lines. Order it now. It's by me and Justin Haskins. It's called The Great Reset, Joe Biden and the Rise of the 21st Century Fascism. Uh, Justin, this thing is traveling so fast And it's just a matter of who captures the American and uh, the the global population first. Are they going to put us in chains before we figure out what it is as a as a population? Yeah, well, I I mean, that's what we're trying to stop. Right. I mean, I think that this has been going on for a very long time. We've been playing catch up over the past year and a half or so because the rhetoric changed and signaled to people like us that something very wrong was going on here. When they started calling it the Great Reset, that's when we really started digging deeply into what was happening. And we've found that over the past 10 years or more, they've been advancing the world towards this new economy, this 21st century fascism. fascism. Right. It's a form of fascism. It's been going on for a very long time, this movement, but it's accelerated rapidly over the past year and a half, and especially since Joe Biden has become president, and this new announcement is gla- in Glasgow is absolutely massive move toward this great reset world they're trying to build. So explain what it means and why it's so important. So the announcement, we, we don't have all of the details yet, but what we do know is that this there's going to be this partnership between the United States government and the World Economic Forum, and it's called the First Movers Coalition. Okay, and so the, you know, the, the World Economic Forum is about as spooky as uh, Hydra. I mean, this is a group of the elite of the elites at Davos. They gave birth to the World Economic Forum, or is it the other way around? But this is... This is when you hear about Davos and meeting with George Soros and everything else. That's what this is. And now our country is partnering with them on the Great Reset. Yeah, that's that's exactly right. And the whole purpose of this First Movers Coalition is to create a public-private partnership between major corporations and business and the U.S. government so that they can essentially manipulate the economy without actually having to pass a law in Congress that says you have to do X, Y, or Z. They're mm-hmm. trying to build this, this. It's essentially it's collusion between the government, private corporations, and the facilitator of all of this is the World Economic Forum, who, as you mentioned, are the people behind the Great Reset Movement and uh, Davos and all of that other stuff. And the key point person, according to the press release that they've put out and some of the information they've provided to the public in the U.S. government, is going to be John Kerry, who is part of the uh, Biden administration's um, cabinet. And he's the special envoy for climate. And this is so, so important for people to understand. John Kerry has been openly supporting the Great Reset. I mean, attending Great Reset events saying, I support the Great Reset, and he promised back in November 2020, after Joe Biden was declared the winner of that election, that under Joe Biden, the Great Reset will happen, and it will happen with greater speed and greater intensity than most people realize. And now he's the one spearheading this coalition with the World Economic Forum Great Reset people to try to create the public-private partnerships that you and I have been talking about and warning about now for for years. So when the president made this announcement, he was on stage with um, uh, John Kerry right next to him, and right next to John Kerry was Bill Gates. Um, this is this is a elitist. It's a movie, honestly. You, it's a movie. It's these are Bond villains here, um, and they are taking control. Uh, and will take control of industry, of farming, of you name it. And you won't have a choice. This is an end run around our Constitution and around our Congress and Senate. It's an end run. That's, that, that's exactly right. And the reason they're doing it this way is because they have, 
failed so spectacularly trying to get laws passed in Congress and trying to get things through the Supreme Court historically. They've done they, they've been so bad at trying to make this thing happen at the speed that they want it to happen that way that they figured out this other way of doing it through private corporations and by coercing them, threatening them, twisting their arm, providing them with carrots and threatening them with sticks. They've been able to build this entire Great Reset system on the side. And most people haven't even realized that this is going on. This is the way that society will be transformed. It's through this Great Reset and these public-private partnerships and big cronyist deals. And the other important thing to keep in mind is that they keep telling us that this is about the stakeholders. This is about people, regular folks. No, are regular folks in da- are in Davos? Are they in Glasgow right now? Are if they this was truly decision? if this was truly about uh, the regular folks, they would be spelling this out from the Oval Office every night for a week and say, "Look, here's a big thing. We're going to change the way we do business in America, and here's what we're doing." Instead, they say it's a conspiracy theory while they're doing it. The, the, you have no stake in this. You have no say in this. You won't have any say in this. Um, this is the way they are. They will transform everything. It is in our banks. It's in our global corporations. Let's just say they have this special deal with all the steel makers. Okay, you're building a car. All right, if the government says that you have to build electric vehicles and a car in a certain way, and you say, no, I don't think that's the best way, not only does the government have a what's called a golden stakeholder position on your board that can override the board's decision, but they can also make it very painful for you with the banks. They say, no, you have to go green. The banks say, we can't fund you because you are not making enough green cars. And uh, even if the bank doesn't hold back, the steel company in the public-private partnership with the United States government, they will say, we can't sell you any steel to make that car. We can't sell you any aluminum to make your car or the cans uh, for your uh, farm goods because, well, you're not green enough. This is going to happen on everything. This is not just about climate change. This is ESG, environment, social justice, and governance. So who do you have in charge? What does your team look like? Do you have, do you have enough black people? Do you have enough anybody but Asians and white people running the, com- the company? That's what this is really all about, a complete not just economic reformation, but a social reformation at the same time. At the end of this, if they get their way, by 2030, America is completely gone, completely gone as you know it. Yes, without without a doubt. And this isn't speculation. Everything, basically everything that you just said, They've openly advocated for the complete transformation of society, pushing the reset button on the entire global economy, having a new uh, economic model, rewriting the social contract. That's something that John Kerry himself has called for numerous times. And again, he's now the one running this first movers coalition with the World Economic Forum. They've been very open about what they want to do. And then when people criticize them, They say, no, 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 this is a conspiracy theory. Mm -hmm. It's the ultimate form of gaslighting. This is the biggest gaslighting event that has ever happened in human history. They're telling the entire world that there's nothing really going on, while at the same time saying they're going to push the reset button on all of society and rewrite social contracts and change the economy as we know it and change your life. And everyone has to participate, and every country has to participate, and every industry has to participate. And these are the sorts of things they're saying, while at the same time saying, oh, nothing's really going on here. So you don't need to worry about it. And this is why I think that the Democrats are not really that concerned about learning their lesson. Um, Because in the end, you are under their thumb one way or another. You're under the thumb of big government. Either that is either exerted over you through the banking system or uh, the monetary system, or the system of where you work, when you work, how you work, who you work with, all of these things, you're, you're not going to have space to go to. There's no free space, if they have their way, on the entire planet. It's all centrally planned and centrally run. 
And your voice is only through the voice of your elected official. And they don't care if that's Mugabe or, or you know, the Queen or, you know, uh, King Biden. They don't care. Yeah, they, they don't care because it isn't about what people really want. In their minds, it's we're all a bunch of stupid sheep. They should be in charge of the world because if they just had control of everything, the world would be so much better. And there's this existential crisis of climate change that justifies any amount of authoritarian actions that they want to take anyway. And so they're going to do whatever it is they want to try to impose this, while at the same time not including regular people in the conversation, while saying that they are including the regular people in the conversation and that they're doing this all for their benefit. Meanwhile, they're all getting super rich off of this crony scheme. Uh, In some cases, they're making hundreds of millions and billions of dollars. You look at BlackRock and people like that have added trillions of dollars to their portfolios over just the past few years while engaging in all of this great great reset stuff. So it's a giant Ponzi scheme in in a lot of ways, but it's also the biggest power grab we've ever seen. And yes, this is a conversation we should all be having nationally. There should be a national conversation that we're all having. Do we want to push the reset button on the global economy, on the American economy? Do we want to move in this direction of the Great Reset? Do we want to put elites in charge of virtually everything through ESG scores and and crony systems and all of this stuff? And we're not having that conversation. They're going to try to impose it on us no matter what. And the most important part of this entire thing, the proof of that, is yesterday they asked John Kerry about the the Build Back Better bills and how in Congress and how these infrastructure bills have failed. They asked him about it, and he essentially said – and I don't have the quote in front of me right now, but he essentially said, it doesn't really matter what happens in Congress. We're going to find a way to do this anyway. We're already starting to do it now through the government at COP26. Yeah, he said said yesterday that we've already, we're doing it through the administrative uh, arm and we don't need Congress. Thank you so much. The name of the book is The Great Reset. It is by me and Justin Haskins, who you just heard, Joe Biden, The Rise of the 21st Century Fascism. Pick it up now at Amazon. Order your copy now, The Great Reset.